Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, basically, I am planning to discuss about international financial reporting standards and international accounting standards. Uh, the major changes and updates uh, pertaining to all these standards. Uh, and if you have any questions or any clarifications pertaining to uh, these standards, what you can do is you can uh, comment below and I will try my level best to discuss all these uh, questions and clarification in my future videos. And also I would like to know whether you would like to see more of uh, a theoretical aspect of the standard, so theoretical uh, discussion or you would like to see more of uh, practical uh, examples with explanations okay so please uh, let me know your thoughts uh, on this so i am looking forward to uh, receiving your comments on my uh, videos okay so please uh, comment below and enjoy the session thanks Today let's uh, look at the uh, difference between IFRS 16 and IA 17 leases. The difference between IA 17 and IFRS 16. Okay. Now basically, uh, uh, this IA uh, 17, IA 17 is uh, superseded by IFRS 16 leases standard. Okay, so which is effective from uh, January, 1st January 2019. Okay, now let's look at the uh, main uh, differences between uh, IA 17 and IFRS 16. Now, IA 17, uh, from the point of view of the lessee, okay, uh, we used to recognize the lease as either operating lease or finance lease okay these are the two types of uh, categories under IAS 17 okay uh, when it is operating lease uh, what we need to do is we need to recognize uh, the lease payment as an expense in the profit or loss account okay when it is operating lease you need to recognize straight away as an expense in the profit or loss account the problem uh, relating to this particular uh, recognition is the liability is hidden okay uh, the liability is hidden and it is not shown uh, on the balance sheet and only a disclosure is given in the notes to the financial statement okay uh, the problem is uh, some of the operating leases are long term contracts and uh, those are non cancellable. Okay, you can't cancel the contract. Okay, so therefore, uh, with regard to that, uh, we don't recognize a liability on the balance sheet. So, therefore, the liability is hidden. Okay, so these are called off balance sheet items, only a disclosure is made okay uh, in order to avoid that only the IFRS 16 standard was introduced so this removes uh, the uh, discrepancies uh, with regard to the uh, hiding of the liability and it uh, it recognizes most of the leases on the balance sheet under IFRS 17 okay uh, now uh, the other category is the uh, finance lease. Uh, the finance lease, if it is a finance lease, the lessee has to recognize an asset, the liability and the depreciation. Okay, this is the normal way of uh, recognizing the finance lease. Now, when it comes to IFRS 16, as I told you, it puts most leases on balance sheet because of the discrepancy in the uh, IAS. Uh, 17. Uh, with regard to IFRS 16, we should uh, we should identify whether the contract is a service contract or a lease contract. If it is a service contract, straight away you need to charge the uh, rental payment as an expense in the income statement. 
and when it comes to uh, the lease contract okay if it is a lease contract you need to identify right of use asset you need to recognize the asset we call it right of use asset from the point of view of the lessee and we need to recognize the liability and we should provide the depreciation okay which is similar uh, to the accounting treatment of finance lease under IAS 17 which is the finance lease under IAS 17 okay now how do you determine whether the contract is a service contract or a lease contract what is the criteria the criteria is simply uh, you need to identify uh, whether there is an asset exist okay we need to identify uh, whether there is an asset exist okay can you identify an asset so this is the main criteria okay so uh, can you can you identify an asset so this is the main criteria okay so for example let's say uh, now you are going to uh, rent out a warehouse okay uh, for a period of let's say five years now if the contract says if the contract is going to assign a particular area a designated area okay then that contract creates an asset okay so therefore that will fall under the lease contract if the contract doesn't specify a particular place or doesn't allocate a, a particular place and the the owner of the warehouse can exchange the place okay so you are renting out only a particular uh, square meters okay so you can uh, the owner can uh, allocate anywhere uh, any place in the warehouse so in that case it's not a lease contract you cannot identify and assets so therefore it has to be treated as a service contract so this is the main criteria where you uh, you uh, identify an asset if you can identify an asset it has to be a lease contract if it is a lease contract even though it is <coughs> from the point of view of the lessee you need to identify an asset we call it right of use asset so this is right of use asset this asset has to be recognized as an asset then the liability has to be recognized and the depreciation has to be charged on the asset okay so i will do an uh, example on this particular uh, treatment how to identify the right of use assets you need to uh, calculate the present value of the lease payment by using the interest rate so okay so i will discuss uh, a particular question on this okay so these are the uh, main differences between ia 17 and ifrs 16 okay so uh, uh, let me wind up the class and uh, uh, i will see you soon with uh, another uh, ifrs standard okay so until then uh, bye for now see you